Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In this episode, we're gonna take our first look at Analog Effects Pro 2 by Nick Software. Well, what is Analog Effects Pro 2? Well, with it, you could give your image a classic film look or maybe some type of classic camera look, like a toy camera or a wet plate look or some type of classic film look. You'll be able to do that with Analog Effects Pro 2. In this video, we're going to use it as a standalone product. In subsequent videos, I'll demonstrate how to use it as a Lightroom plugin and a Photoshop plugin. And in each video, I'll introduce some new features of the software. This video is gonna be more or less an overview of Analog Effects Pro 2. Now, one thing I wanna say real quick, and I should have uh, addressed this in an earlier video because I've been receiving this question a lot. Many people have been asking that own the Google version of the Nick collection, be it the free Google version or back even when Google was charging $150 for it. Um, should they bother upgrading to the DxO version? Well, my answer is probably not. Uh, there aren't any new features in the DxO version. There's definitely not any new modules in the DxO version, at least not yet, as of Wednesday, February 13, 2019. What DxO did do is they uh, did some performance enhancements. They fixed some bugs. Uh, there's a problem with the Google version, with the latest version of Photoshop CC with it crashing. Um, DxO fixed that. So chances are, if you're you know, using um, Nick Collection and it's working fine for you and you own this Google version, chances are if you upgrade to the DxO version, you're going to be upset because you're not going to see anything better. It's not going to really perform that much better that you're going to notice it. On the other hand, if you're using it and it's crashing all the time and you just really almost can't use it because it crashes so much, it may be worth it then to upgrade the DxO version. You should see that it won't crash. Um, I can't guarantee that. Of course, I don't work for DxO and I'm not privy to the inner workings of the software. But from what I understand, the DxO version does not crash any longer, especially with Photoshop CC. Now, I mentioned we're going to use Analog Effects Pro 2 as a standalone product. I have it open. I want to load an image into it. We're going to go up to File, Open Images. Now, on my desktop, I have two images. They're actually the same image, but one of them is a RAW file, and you can see it's grayed out. Uh, Analog Effects Pro 2 does not work on RAW files, so you have to load in either a TIFF file or a JPEG. Now, when you use it as a plugin, you'll see in our next video when I use it as a Lightroom plugin, Lightroom will create the TIFF file for you. So you could work on a RAW file in Lightroom, then send it over into Analog Effects Pro 2, and it will create the TIFF file for you. So in this case, I want to pick this TIFF file right here. It's called Fountain Plaza, and we're gonna click Open. Now, as soon as I open it, you're gonna see it's gonna add what is, if you look over in the left-hand panel, a classic camera look to the image. You can see it there, and I'm gonna maximize the window so we 
could see it very well. So really, what is Analog Effects Pro 2 and how does it work? Well, if we go over here in this left-hand panel, you can see it looks like it's presets, and it is. These are all different classic camera presets. If you go over here on the right-hand panel, and you can see that the classic camera presets has a lot of different modules involved. It has a basic adjustments, a dirt and scratches, a lens vignette, and a film type, at least for this specific preset. Well, what are these? Well, if you go back over here where it says classic camera and you click there, you can see that they're called tools. And there's a number of different tools and each tool does a specific thing to your image. We have the basic adjustment tool, which is that top one. Then we have a dirt and scratches there. If we go down the list and find that somewhere down here, there's dirt and scratches. And as you go on, there's different, you know, tools, lens vignette. There's the film type is in there. There's film type. So we have all these different tools. And to the right of that, you'll see tool combinations. And you'll see that the classic camera is the one that's active now. And these are all the different tool combinations that give you a preset for a classic camera. If we go to the right in black and white, you'll see now there's a bunch of different black and white presets. Let's just pick one. I'll do black and white 7. And when I pick black and white 7, you'll notice over when it's done loading, in the right-hand panel, we'll see a number of different tools that constitute that black and white 7 preset. And you can see there's more here. We have, looks like, 7 of them. So basic adjustments, dirt and scratches, lens vignette, film type frames, levels and curves. So we have all these different tools that make up this uh, preset. Now each tool has very specific adjustments. Some have different looks inside of them. So you could go to like basic adjustments consists of four sliders. And you could see in this case it just did detail extraction to the right and the other ones are at zero. That's the adjustment for this. Now you could come back in and I could adjust this like my way. You know, bring it way up, way down. I could readjust the image basically and make it my own. Now let's go back over here to this left-hand panel and click where it says black and white again. And you'll notice, again, it had classic camera, black and white, a color cast, tool combination, motion, wet plate, subtle bokeh. These are all tool combinations. Double exposure, toy camera. Let's look at toy camera. So these are all these uh, toy camera looks. We'll look at toy camera five. You can see there's a kind of toy camera look. And you can see there's um, this specific preset within the tool the toy camera collection consists of five different um, five different tools. All right, and we'll go back up here. And we also have vintage camera and multi-lens. Now below that, we have build a camera, and it says camera kit. Now if I click on that, what it will allow me to do is come over here and add my own filters in whatever, or my own tools, I'm sorry, I, I tend to think of these as filters, but they're technically called tools. I, um, I could add my own tools in the order I want them in. Now, right now, I did have this one specific one picked already, but I could come in here and remove these. You could see where it says basic adjustments. I could hit this minus sign and remove it. Remove lens distortion. Remove that one. That one. So their uh, film type is the only one left right there. Now... One thing to be aware of, let's say now I go, okay, I kind of like that film type, but I want to add some basic adjustments. If I just click right on the word or the name basic adjustments, or even on that icon that's to the left of basic adjustments, what it actually does, it will replace whatever tool was there with the tool I just clicked on. So see basic adjustments is here all by itself. Let's go over here where it says double exposure. Click on that. It replaced it with that. So what you have to be careful is how you click on these. So usually if you're building your own camera kit, you would probably start out with basic adjustments. So you'll just add that so it's all by itself. Then you could do your adjustments here. Let's say we're gonna add some detail to that. Uh, maybe bring brightness down a little bit, contrast up a little bit, maybe saturation down a little bit. Okay, so we did this basic adjustment tool. I wanna add another tool. Uh, let's add a light leak. Now, don't click right on the name. You'll see that little plus sign. Click on that. That will add that underneath the tool that was 
just being used. So in this case here, we have the strength slider. We have a drop down that gives us a, a soft, crisp, or a dynamic look. And we have these different looks here. So I could try to give it a look. Let's say we're going to totally destroy this image when I'm done. And it's loading the texture. Okay, I really don't like that. Let's go to this one. All right, I'm not going to be too fussy, but that, all right, that's, let's say we like that. So I have this light leaks look. Now I want to add another one. Now again, be careful you don't click on the name. Or in this case, I think actually once we have at least two there, uh, clicking on the name won't do anything. It kind of locks it. So it's when you only have one tool active or available over here on the right, that's when you're going to keep replacing it. You have to click the plus sign. Once you have more than one, now you could just, you, your only option is to click on the plus sign is what's, what I'm saying. So uh, let's go to a lens vignette. I want to add a lens vignette. I'm going to click there. And we have this circle. And each you know, tool will have different things you could do to adjust your tool specific to your image. Kind of adjust the size. Different. So let's say I like that. Um, so again, we have all these tools. We could add them all. We could add one. We could add multiple ones. Whatever to give you the look you want. Now in this case here, let's back that off a little bit. All right, so we have that. So we have all these different tools. If you're, you know, satisfied and you like it, and you'd like to create your own preset. Go over here to the right where it says save. Click there and you're going to give it a preset name. And I'm going to go, let's call it Tony's look. I don't know, just for the heck of it. All right, so it's called Tony's look. We're going to click OK. Now it's here in custom. See right there? So what I could come back up here, let's go back. And let's go to a wet plate look. And let's just totally destroy what I just did. I'm going to click wet plate 8. Okay. And it's going to take a second. I apologize for all the waiting. And do, 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 do. And there it goes. Okay. Actually, I kind of like that one. All right. So it did this wet plate 8, which consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different tools. Gave us this look. Now, we could go back, we could choose anything. I go to multi-lens, I could do something there. Or I could go back down here where it says custom. Click on custom, and there is my Tony's look that I just did. And it has the sliders exactly as I placed them, the exact light leak I chose. So everything is preserved in this preset that I call Tony's look. Now, you could import presets right here. So if, um, you know, you have a friend that created a bunch of presets, they could send them to you and you could import them there. And they'll come, you'll hit this plus sign, and then you could navigate to where they are on your computer and import them uh, there. Also, I should note that um, when you do these adjustments, there's a history tab. And in the history tab is everything I've done uh, to this image. There's the original image I could click on. Like classic camera one, that's the first thing it did to the image. Remember, it added this classic camera look to the image. Let it render. But anyway, you could go back through your history and, you know, click on it. You go, wow, you know what, I kind of messed it up. I really liked something I did five minutes ago, and I was playing around, and I kind of ruined it once it renders. And what did I say I liked? I liked. I liked wet plate eight. I could click there. So I could go back through history and I could find a point I was in the past and apply it to my image. And again, it's going to take a while to render. And once it does, we'll have our tools over here on the right. And one thing I should add in future videos, we're going to get a little more specific about some of these tools. You'll notice that there's control points. And that's what we'll be doing in our next video. Um, some of the tools have very specific features that aren't found in some of the other tools. And we'll go through some of those important ones. And you can see some, um, most of them will have control points. Not all of them, but most of them will have uh, control points. 
involved. So we could do control points uh, to the image uh, to add this tool to a very specific point or part of the image, and we'll talk about that. So let's say we're done. I like this. Now you have, when you use it as a standalone product, you have this save button over here. I suggest you don't use that. Um, you may remember in a past video for a different NIC module, if you click save over here, it will save your image, but it, you may not know where it saved it. A better option is to go up to the top um, file menu and go to save image as. On a Mac you could hit command S. I don't know what that keyboard shortcut is for a Windows computer but it will be showing right there. It may be control S. So we'll click there and then now I have some choices and I could expand this box make it bigger by clicking right here and have a few more choices. So I could give this a look um, let's say um, oh, this is wet plate right? All right, so we're giving this wet plate look. I'm going to save it on my desktop, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG. All right, so on my desktop is a JPEG, and we're going to click Save, and it has the progress bar as it's saving the image. And now we could just cancel out of here because we already saved the image, right? So we'll click Cancel that. Here's my image right here, wet plate, wet plate .jpeg. Our original image was this TIFF file right there. So there's the original image. And there is our processed image in Analog Effects Pro 2. So you can see. Now I, I must say Analog Effects Pro 2 probably isn't for everybody. It's not something I would use probably. Um, maybe if I'm just bored on a rainy day I may play around with it. Uh, but it's not something I care to use. But a lot of people will love this stuff and love doing these things. Um, so more power to you and I'm going to show you everything uh, you need to know on how to use this application because it is very powerful and you could do a lot uh, with your image. So I'm going to end this video here. In our next video we're going to use it as a Lightroom plugin and we're going to get into a little more specifics about how to use some of those tools and how to use some of the control points in those tools on how they'll affect your image. Thank you, really, thank you so much. I know I say this in every video. I just want you to know I really do mean it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos, who shares my videos, who hits that thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.